Hi, I'm here in uh, Moyne Abbey. Uh, it's Sunday, Christ the King in the new calendar. And um, uh, I was just listening to Bishop Fonsi, who's urging the government to reconsider so that we could uh, go back to mass. And uh, I suppose I, I always reflect on, you know, how the faith has been lived in Ireland through the centuries. You come to these many of these abbeys around Ireland that, um, you know, during the Reformation um, were, were burnt down, you know, the, the, you know, forces arrived, told people to vacate and they were burnt down as happened across the United Kingdom and Ireland and uh, the faithful sadly had to leave and go underground, you know, to practice their faith on the mass rocks around Ireland for 220 years priests being formed abroad and coming back to offer the mass and many of them being killed you know because there was a bounty on a priest's head in Ireland during that time and you know Ireland faced far more diff difficult challenges than the COVID-19 you know we, we 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 went through a you know a famine and uh, and times of mo of great hardship in Ireland but the faith always survived and um Today, we look at uh, Ireland and, uh, you know, I'm not downplaying COVID-19. It's a real virus and it can be deadly to uh, mostly the elderly with underlying conditions, you know. Um, but it's it's certainly not the worst plague that Ireland has ever faced, uh, not by a long shot. And, uh, and we've faced far more difficult challenges. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see, you know, there are communities around Ireland, many communities around Ireland in every diocese that have, you know, kept the faith alive in community and kept the mass alive in community, uh, you know, in an underground way. And uh, that's very important because, you know, in the whole history of the church in Ireland, we've always kept the mass alive in community, always, through every single year in our history. And this year has no been no exception. No matter what restrictions are put in place, you know, Christ is our king. And, uh, you know, we, we live differently. Us Christians, us Catholics, we live differently because, you know, those who have hope live differently. And um, I was, you know, I was impressed by, if you looked at the news the other day, the, the patriarch of uh, Serbia, Patriarch Irene, he, he died of coronavirus at the age of 90 after he celebrated the funeral of another elderly um, bishop. And, you know, the media have put it out. Oh, look at this stupid idiot. He, 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 he went and he celebrated mass and now he's dead of coronavirus. But at the end of the day, his whole existence, his whole reason for being was the faith. You know, he was the leader of his church. How would he abandon his people? You know, how, you know, that was his whole reason of being. He was 90 years old. And what better way for him, for a leader in the faith to stand his ground with his people to the end? You know, and, uh, you know, as, as Christians and as Catholics, you know, we live differently. We have a different perspective on the reality of this world because this is not our ultimate resting place. You know, we believe in heaven. And Christ, you know, came to give a very radical different message to the world. And it's not, you know, many of you think I'm stupid or I'm, you know, believing in fairy tales. But us Christians, us Catholics, we believe differently. We have hope. Christ rose from the dead. That's, you know, something that the world doesn't understand because, you know, they will, well, you know, well, we weren't there to test that theory that you're talking about, you know. He was on the cross. Why didn't he come down and dance around and, you know, you know, convert the world that way? Well, that wasn't his way. You know, he had to, he had to, um, uh, you know, win over death and, uh, you know, rise from the dead and show those around him who, you know, his disciples, you know, that, you know, he had conquered death. And, you know, and today is no different. You know, us Christians, us Catholics in Ireland, we live differently. And, you know, this, this, this virus that seems to have, you know, uh, we take ultra, ultra precautions against the virus in some ways, but in others we don't, you know, because seemingly going to Tesco and Lidl for, you know, 20 minutes uh, seems to be fine. 
but going to mass, well social distant, and seems to be a, a massive threat. And we shouldn't be naive. Our faith has always been under attack, always. Over 2,000 years, our faith has always been under attack. And we shouldn't be naive to think that our government is going to, you know, make an exception for us now. It's not, you know, it's always been under attack. And it's time for Catholics and Christians around the world to come together, to form your communities, to pray together and to live the faith together, as we've always done over 2000 years. We live differently. We hold our, our lives to a different standard than the world because this is not our ultimate resting place. Now, I find it very, very interesting in Ireland during the, these last few months, the government has been, mo has been more focused on legislating for euthanasia than supporting us Catholics, you know, allowing us to practice our faith. They would prefer to pass legislation on euthanasia. And at the same time, they're saying, oh, you, you have to all stay at home to protect the elderly. You know, at the end of the day, they want to give the choice to elderly to to be, you know, given a lethal injection. They want to give them that choice, but they don't want to give them the choice of actually going to mass and practicing their faith. Isn't that incredible? That's in Ireland. You know, that's the legislation that, that we're being passed in Ireland because, you know, the, our, our, our government, you know, does not, uh, does not respect our human life you know we're more interested in abortion and, and euthanasia than we are in the in the catholic faith you know that's the popular themes of the day and uh, I, and as catholics and as christians we we should not be naive to think that you know somehow that they're going to they're going to respect our beliefs and our faith they're not you know and we have to we have to group together and form our own communities and live our faith differently, you know, and understand these times. These, this may go on for many years, you know. You might have a, a vaccine next year and this all disappears. But, you know, in 2023 or 2025 or 2030, you could have COVID-23, COVID-25, COVID-30, some flu, some virus that comes along, similar in nature. And all of a sudden, everything is shut down again. You know, this could be repeated, you know, you know, rolling, rolling over the next couple of years. Because any little threat is, you know, we, we can't deal with it. You know, we seem to have forgotten that we've had bad flu years you know, every 20, every 10 to 20 years where you would have a spike in deaths. That's happened. That's life. That's how, you know, nature is. But seemingly this, this year um, is totally different and unprecedented in human history. And, uh, and uh, people seem to forget that more people are dying from malaria than COVID-19 all over the world. But hey, facts don't matter in, in, in these COVID times, not in the first world, because, you know, we, 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 seem, to, we seem to have a different view on the, these things. And again, I'm not downplaying this. If you're, if, you've got, if you're elderly with underlying conditions and you're very susceptible to this, as you would be susceptible to any, many other illnesses, you know, we need to take precautions. You know, people who, are on, who, have, who have lower immune systems because of cancer and so forth, we need to take precautions, as we would do at, you know, at any stage. But um, this, this, this virus you know, has, has, has been used to cover a multitude of sins. And, uh, and we can't be naive to think that the government has our best intentions in heart because they don't. The communist government didn't have the best intentions in heart either. Governments all through history, when it comes to the faith, they don't have their best intentions because they see us as, as non-conforming. We don't conform. And uh, Catholics in Ireland have never conformed to those who wanted to destroy our faith. And we will, and 2020 is no different. And um, I think, you know, it's time for Catholics to, you know, to really understand and dig in and live our faith because, you know, we live differently. We really live differently. We are not, um, uh, we are not the, the you know, we, we are not, you know, meant to, to stay forever in this world. We will all die at some stage. And we live differently because Christ has given us, given us a different message. 
And many people don't won't believe this. They'll think we're crazy, you know, that we believe in a guy that lived 2000 years ago that rose from the dead. Many people would think we're crazy to believe this, but this is our faith. This is our Catholic faith. And this Catholic faith has always been lived in community. Always, our, our faith is not a virtual reality. We've always lived this faith in community. We've always come to receive the Eucharist, you know, uh, the Eucharist, uh, thanking our Lord, you know, Eucharist from Greek, Eucharistia, to, you know, the, the, the real body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. We've always done this in community. You know, the faith isn't a virtual reality. We, we cannot farm it out to YouTube and <laughs> Facebook. Uh, you know, if those streaming services were gone tomorrow, you know, what would we do? You know, the internet does not replace our community worship of our Lord, which is a very, uh, you know, he came to give us his body, his soul and divinity in a real pr and present way. And we must make the effort to continue to do that. And um, and I'm thankfully in all over Ireland, thankfully, you know, priests will offer their public mass today in a very undercover and, you know, clandestine way and underground way. But because, you know, the faith, the mass will always be something that we will offer in community in Ireland with the faithful present. And 2020 is no different. And no matter what the government tells us, our, our obedience is to a higher power. It is to Christ, our King. You know, He is our Lord, not Michal Martin in Dublin or the government. Our faith, our obedience is to a higher power. You know, and uh, and at the end of the day, and, and I and I was reflecting on that patriarch in, in in Serbia. At the end of the day, you know, he he stood his ground and he he understood the power of his of his presence of his example, and he you know he 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 died, uh, you know, at ninety, um, in his church, you know, in, in, in among his faithful. You know, and we could say, well, how stupid he was to, to, to allow that to happen and to let the virus spread. And, you know, but at the end of the day, we have to realize we, we, we our, our kingdom isn't, our, 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 our ultimate resting place isn't that, isn't this world. And when we're 70, 80, 90, you know, at some stage, we will face that moment where we will go from this world to the other. And we have to prepare ourselves for that. We have to live our faith. You know, because uh, at the end of the day, this is not our ultimate resting place, you know. Um, and uh, so, you know, I just want to offer encouragement to some to Catholics out there, you know, to 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 don't be afraid to be Catholic. Don't be afraid to be to practice your faith, you know, shoulder to shoulder with other people. And, uh, or, you know. With precautions, you know, I'm not saying you should. We should be reckless here. You know, don't go, don't go visiting Granny if she's for if she's ill or if you're sick. Don't obviously, you know, don't go out. Or if you've been with somebody sick, you know, take the obvious, sensible precautions. You know, you know, we have to be morally, morally. Uh, 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 we have to think of the our moral obligations here. But at the end of the day, we shouldn't. We shouldn't abandon our faith communities. We should stay together, pray together, offer mass together, you know, in a sensible, cautious way, and uh, and and keep the faith alive and to, and to, to teach our children uh, the faith, you know, that you know, which is the most important thing in life. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're not, we're not. This is not our 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 resting place. You know. This is uh, this world is is uh, will pass away, and we will we will you know we Catholics live differently. We have hope, you know, and which the world can never offer us, can never give us, you know, etern uh, you know eternal eternal existence on this earth does not exist and will never exist, you know, and uh, we we live differently. So, um, you know, just offering this this encouragement to other Catholics, you know, live in communities, live together, pray together, you know, don't abandon your faith in this time. It's not a virtual reality. 
You know, we don't live our faith virtual. We don't place our faith on the same level as Netflix, YouTube and, and Facebook and our, and our laptops and our computers. That's not how we live. That's never how we've lived our faith. You know, it is a, 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 an, a, an act of communal worship. That's what church means. Ecclesia is community gathering. That's how we practice and live the faith, you know, as much as possible and within reason and with precautions. You know, you could gather here outside, pray together, you know. How many people are out running and doing football practice and, and senior GAA championships and going to Tesco? Well, you can do the same thing in an outdoor abbey and stand around and pray together and offer mass together and be Catholics together. That is what we are called to do. And that's how us Irish Catholics have always lived our faith. And this year will be no different. No matter what legislation the government passes, our faith is more important and should always be lived in community where we can experience the body, blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist in community. And uh, so this is... Uh, Feast of Christ the King. So I'd just like to 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 finish off with the with the with what you know. I used to live in Mexico, and, and they used to have this saying, which was, "Viva Cristo Rey," uh, you know, "Live long, live Christ our King." And let's hope that that happens. And uh, may there always be faith in Ireland. <laughs>